Uh, Spark 7, find and win the buyer. My name is Link Carlin, and uh, I've been an agent here for about a year and a half. Um, started, I got my license on Cinco de Mayo. I finished all of my, and I was, I was telling Raymond. Raymond, I was telling Raymond the other day, or earlier, about um, my testing, getting through the classes and then having to wait because Pearson shut down because of because of COVID. So I had to wait six weeks until I could take the test. So um, got my license, Cinco de Mayo, and then you know, I've, I've been working for the most part full time doing this and lucky enough to, to have capped twice already. And, you know, after someone moving here two and a half years ago, you know, a year later I get a license and, you know, don't know a lot of people it's kind of important to find and win the buyers. So, um, you know, the way that we do that can can be any number of different lead gen techniques, but, um, you know, that's, that's a big part of it. You gotta have the opportunities before you get uh, work. So we'll talk about that a little bit with um, how and why and what we may, um, some of the best practices that I've seen, you guys are all welcome to, uh, contribute and it'll be a discussion. So we'll we'll kind of see from this page collectively. So coaching. Oh, are you already at coaching? So on the left over there, guy 2.0, you can go to the student handouts, I think. Yep, student handouts, and then that's going to bring you up to another screen. No, nope, that's the videos. Oh, I can't see. Uh, yeah, yeah, then they'll, then they'll be listed on there, find and win the buyer. But you can download all of those. There's also videos, all kinds of stuff. So. Oh, it's number seven, I think. You might want to scroll oh, down. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's somewhere I can't there. Read <laughs> <laughs> okay. So notices, of course, um, you know, these are all hypotheticals and designed to help us understand how we do some of the day to day operations here, other aspects. Um, all exercises are entirely hypothetical and not intended to enable you to determine how much you can make, but um, either by yourself or as a profit center. Let's see. Okay, we're going to skip that page. Looks good. Okay. And this is going to be a pretty short, at least uh, this part of it's going to be pretty short. Um, the handout stuff, we can talk about some of this. We can go to some of the videos and, and go through some of the things that uh, the, the video will cover and just kind of skip through and see stuff. But, you know, from, from 2019, at least, uh, NAR had a profile of buyers and sellers and the vast majority, 89%, purchased, you know, a home with a real estate agent. Half of those almost, 41%, found their agents through a referral from friends and family. So if we're talking, you know, a very tried and true way to be successful is to just, and you guys have probably heard your, your sphere of influence, your friends and family, your network. Um, those things are very important to your business, right? The people that you already know either have needs or they are related to somebody in some way that has needs for buying, selling, renting, you know, whatever the case is. When, when people are typically looking for a realtor to help them, 75% of those people only interview if, and it may not even be an interview. Sometimes it's a phone call. Hey, can you help me? And, you know, they don't, they don't qualify. They don't track. They don't, um, a lot of times that they'll just, they'll go with that referral and they'll take it and you're going forward. And half of people that visited an open house um, used that as a way to either start or um, continue their search. So when, when we talk about, you see in that group, you see a lot of, hey, I'd like to ho host an open house. Who's got an open house ready? Who can do this? That's a very good way for, for lead gen. You know, you do an open house, right? And you're going to have, you know, six to 50 people come through your open house and some of those are going to be with agents. Some of those are going to have realtors, but a large number, percentage-wise, also has no one helping them. They're 
just beginning. They're not pre-approved. They're not, they're not a lot of things, but they are a very viable candidate for someone that's going to buy a house. So open houses are a good way and you can get in before and after that, that open house to the neighborhood that leaves you a very good way to be in that neighborhood with a reason to be there, right? If it's your listing, if it's the broker's listing, it's my listing, you've got a reason to be in the neighborhood. Hey, hey, my office has an open house. We've got a house coming up for sale. Come to the open house. You know, we'd like you to, even if you like your house and you don't ever want to sell, come to the open house because you can bring a friend, you can pick your neighbor, right? And when you go door knocking in those neighborhoods, it's a really good way to have an absolutely solid reason to be there instead of, hey, are you looking to buy or sell? Are you looking to sell your house? Because we got people that, it's a seller's market. So finding those are hard. People get a lot of phone calls. They get a lot of door knocks. They get a lot of, a lot of people just throwing stuff at the wall trying to get them to sell their house. But I, hey, are you interested in having one of your friends or family come through? That, so I just sold a house, uh, Hewen Heights, uh, closed on it a couple of weeks ago. We did an open house and a guy down the street came through the open house and said, Hey, my, my father-in-law is moving from California to here. He really wants this house. We want him to live close. We'd like to make an offer. Do you have a realtor? Yes. Okay. Have him send me an offer. And they did. And we closed on it. And it was a, it was a generous offer. Um, VA, uh, you know, above list, but but the open house is what generated that one. We also had a couple of people come through saying, hey, I live in the neighborhood. I'm thinking of selling. Okay, and, and haven't, haven't gotten any further with those yet, but we had three um, pretty solid leads for people that live in that neighborhood and they're looking to, to do something in the near future. Um, you know, you got to follow those and track and continue to follow up. That's, that's one of the harder parts of having all of the the lead gen get successful is you have to have a way to track that and command along with the MLS is a, a couple of very simple ways to do that just to stay on top of clients and uh, not forget about them because they, um, you know, if you forget about them, they're going to forget your name and they're going to go somewhere else. Um, when you have a listing in, let's say you're doing an open house for your own listing um, and there's a buyer coming in that doesn't have a, a realtor, you cannot do both sides right you sure I mean, can yeah absolutely can <laughs> who, who told you no <laughs> yeah it's only like four or five pages you can really? okay. yeah you absolutely can if if you catch both sides of a transaction you must alert both sides of intermediary uh -huh. and they both need to be aware that you'll be representing um you, if it's your listing, you're rep representing the seller, you're bringing a buyer, but you still have a listing agreement with the seller. They need to be aware that, um, you know, it's a little bit different for you. Your role will change. Um, that there are, there are some ways that some people are going to say, no, don't ever do that. Mm -hmm. Some agents will take those, those double ends every time. I just didn't know if it was like, it, no, it, it's, it's legal. Sometimes the ethics can get in there. Uh, and, it, and it becomes questionable because if you have a house that has a handful of offers on it and yeah. the one that gets selected is the one that you found, it may raise questions. Uh, I, I had an open house late last year uh, over by Lake Arlington and had a guy come through. It was my listing. A guy came through and said, I'd like to make an offer on the house right now. And, and he... And he he, he showed me the proof of funds. He's a cash buyer. We hadn't had any offers on that. And uh, it was six or seven days into the listing. So it wasn't, it, no, it was, it was priced on the higher side of appraisal. And they wanted to live on the lake. This was a house that was on the lake. And I said, you know, this is my listing. He said, I don't care. I want you to get all the commission. Fine. I didn't, and this was a, this was an investor's house that was a rental and I wasn't sure about the, the repairs, the negotiations, if there was going to be an appraisal. So I took, um, I, I wrote the contract and then I assigned the buyer an intermediary out of this office, right? So I assigned a different client to represent him through closing. 
paid them, you know, a portion of commission and we split it. And that, that gave me the ability to say, Hey, I represent the seller only. I assigned someone to represent the buyer's interests and he got what he wanted. So you can, you can do that. You can refer it out. You can, you can hand it off. You, there's a number of things you can do, but it's a, you know, it's, it's typically everything is a case by case scenario. So, yep. So that one, I mean, you can, but you need to be very careful, um, you know, with how you cover your bases and the situations on the contract. And sometimes it's, you know, I, I had another one, one of my first ones was a $49,000 trailer in Granbury. I double ended that one because there, there was no inspection. There was no nothing. Um, cash, we'll take it. We'll close in 10 days. And then she closed and then she listed it with me the very next day. So I sold that thing three, three transactions in 15 days. Yeah, yeah, well, very small ones, very small ones, but I mean, it's still, it's still counted. So it, it depends, right? I mean, if, if, if it's something small like that and there's no repairs, there's no negotiations, nothing, go for it. Yep. Yeah. Very simple. So. Yep. All right. Cultivate buyer leads. Let's talk about cultivating buyer leads and lead generation model. And if you guys are on zoom, um, and if I miss something in the chat, please, uh, please speak up or, you know, just say something, feel free to chime in and ask questions or, you know, whatever, however that works for you guys. Um, you know, and then they, you've seen the, the funnel and you've seen how the lead gen works. If you go out and you knock out a hundred doors, uh, that's going to be your prospecting and marketing, right? And that's going to boil down to very few leads and contacts that you get to continue to cultivate, right? And doing that, um, you know, it kind of becomes a numbers game. So the more, the more people you talk to, the more uh, interactions you have, the, the more prospecting and marketing is going to boil down to more leads, more contacts, and in the end, more, more stuff under commission, right? So from, from a numbers perspective, you know, the more, the more people you run into and talk to, the better off your odds are going to be because you're just going to have, by the numbers, more, more in your pipeline. But the other part of that is quality, right? And what are we doing with quality? How do we identify in one of the other um, the qualified buyer leads, one of the other things that they categorize people as is A, B, or C um, classifications, right? And A is going to be able, willing, and ready to make a purchase right now. And then I'm pulling, so let me... Let me look at this share. Let me stop that. I'm going to change that to um, maybe that was on screen. I'm not sure how that was, but I don't know what you guys can see on on Zoom. But this this qualified buyer leads is from the video that's in that KW onward from your. You, you can find the videos there. So I, this was just somewhere I stopped on that one. We're not going to watch the whole video because it's it's a little outdated and redundant on some of that stuff, but. Um, in your big search for prospecting marketing, you're going to have three categories, right? Somebody that's ready to go right now. Uh, B, uh, able and ready, but not right now. They may have, uh, you know, a, a financial event that they need to get through, a credit score, um, something that's shorter term that's going to say, um, you know, three to six months, you know, depending on how you want to classify that with your pipeline. Uh, B is going to be, they're close, but they need something. They may need pre-approval. They need to save some more money for down payment. They may need a number of things. They, mean, they need to sell their house. So, you, know, you may need to work around that one also because they may need the equity in their house to get um, you know, the money to buy the next one. And we've got some tools for that. There's, there's a handful of ways to do that um, through leasebacks, through some of the third-party finance ones with, like Homeward Group or somewhere one of those that can Keller Kelly offers um, you, you've got a number of choices that'll help you get through one of those two transaction things um, buying and selling, you know, with the contingency in this market can be difficult, but possible. You also have some options outside of that. So, and then C is, is just flat, not ready. They could have just got a great job 
but they don't have income and they may need a year of income or two years or whatever that case is, but they, you know, they may be willing to do so in the near future. They just need to hit some benchmarks. So that's um, kind of a broad overview of Cultivate Buyer Leads. For, for you guys, tell me some, some prospecting and marketing that, that you plan on that you have done that you would like to do. Um, something something that, that you'd like to do. Throw, throw some examples at me. Well, anytime you're out um, at events or, you know, any gatherings, um, just ask how people are. Um, and then it starts up conversations on where you're at. Yep, absolutely. I mean, it's the, just being personable and talking to people that you run across is, is a really good tool for that and sincerity, even even if you're not, your direction is going is not going to be hey real estate buy and sell, you know if you're just talking to acquaintances or strangers or whatever that is, and you've got some legitimate interest in what they're doing. If you're out at an event and you know you got friends there and you're friends of friends, you don't know, but you know through getting getting to know them, you know easy enough the conversation turns to what do you do for work? You know, what do you do? You know, what's your job? And, and, you know, you can work your way into that as authentically as possible to, you know, in my opinion, have good results. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, uh, I haven't really got the phone and called people, um, but I have texted a few people and say, hey, uh, I'm, I'm doing real estate now, or and um, out of I don't know maybe 15 people that I have tested, uh, texted. Um, one of them replied and said, uh, "You know, we're actually looking for a house, and I'm uh, actually setting her up to yep. talk to our lender and stuff like that." And that's really nice. And yeah. So, and also last night I was at a football game with my son, and uh, I went and introduced myself to one of his friend's mom, and. Uh, we were talking and then she's like, yeah, we're going to move. And I'm like, so you're buying a house? And she's like, we already bought it. I'm like, oh, I'm a realtor. I, I got excited. And she's like, well, we're going to sell our house. <laughs> like, in the near future, I'm like, oh, you, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. So just, I guess, and I have never, I'm always being very reserved. So just yeah. coming out there and kind of saying what I'm doing, it's a little step out of my show. Yeah. It, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But, it, but it happens a couple of times and you get some confidence and you're comfortable with it. It, it'll be something that becomes second nature. You, you, just, you need the repetition, you need the experience and, and the traffic. We've got, we've got an agent in here, Jessica Ramirez. Her daughter plays T-ball. And I think she might've just worn a shirt that says something about real estate. And she picked up a client you know, a couple of months ago. And I think she, she just went under contract on a very nice house a couple of days ago. So, so those things, a T-ball game is a good place to find people that, that are in need of buying and selling. So I know when um, I was in, uh, I think you guys were in, in Noelle's class. Mm -hmm. She was talking about next door, mm -hmm. the app. Yeah. I, that day I loaded it on my phone and I just decided, okay, well, you know, a few days later that I mentioned when I was didn't put some stuff out there. And then all of a sudden, I mean, like people are interested. Have I got any serious <laughs> bites? <laughs> Yeah. Right? Not but, yet. But it's but yeah. it was very it was like wow. I mean, I just put this little bit out into the universe and I'm getting some bites. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're not like really serious, but it's okay. I mean, there's some activity there. Yeah. That that really made me feel good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you talked about the t-shirts, right? I went and uh, I ordered some t-shirts. Um and I got them probably what yeah. T-shirts. We, we've got a we've got a handful of agents in here that wear witty witty T-shirts, right? Says, I'm a realtor asking for my product. That's mm -hmm. all it says. It has yep. like a picture of a house on it. I mean, like a like a like not a real house, but you know, just kind of like a image. Yeah. 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 And it's colorful. And so you know, I mean, I've only worn it once. 
And I've gotten a little bit of attention, but I'm, <laughs> I'm planning to keep wearing that thing yeah. all the way. Every day. day. Yeah, <laughs> that's um, And I have three colors that I bought, so. Protecting holes to what it says? Yeah, it's yeah. so. Yeah, so, so NAR has a handful of rules, right? And one, one of the things that you cannot do to advertise is, is you can't claim that I'm your realtor. I'm your realtor? I'm, yeah, oh. that, that can't be on any marketing, that can't be on a shirt. You can be a realtor, but you're not my realtor. I mean, so, so there's, there's a bunch of language and I would suggest going to the NAR uh, website and okay. National, National Association of Realtors. And going there and looking at the the advertising and brand guidelines and all, I mean, there's there's a laundry list of things that we cannot do, um, but it does give you lots of lots of leeway to be creative. And you know, I turn coffee into contracts and all about that real estate life. There's there's a a number of different ways that you can just have fun when we get out of this class. If we last until eleven. <laughs> Siobhan uh, is going to be on phones at 11 and, and she is quite creative with the t-shirts that she wears when she's wearing those real estate shirts. Yeah. She's, she's got some fun ones. She does. So, so you can, you can do a lot with that, but there, there are definitely things that you can't do. You can't wear in a person. You can't put on a card. So you just want to check the guidelines on uh, NARS, you know, relatively strict and, you know, the, the use of the word realtor is, is awfully, um, they're awfully litigious with it. So just, just a word of, of warning, just make sure that you understand some of those, those guidelines before you, you, you throw it out there. I have a quick question, because I wasn't sure about this, but the realtor um, with the little R mm -hmm. logo, are we able to use that? Yep, you okay. are, as long as you are part of NAR, which you are. Okay. So if, if you're a realtor, you can say that I am a, not I am your, but yeah, it should be on your cards. Um, I don't know if I have, okay. let's see, I got a card, you got a business card? No, I don't have my card. Yeah, so I've got, I've got this on mine. It's, it's got realtor and it's got the circle R. Um, I've got more on my desk, but you can have that one. Um, but that's, you know, that's, you know, and then you can put designations and all that stuff on there, what, however you want to market, whatever you, you've earned or you qualify for, you're free to do that. Some of the language on there is a little bit different. Just be careful. So if I'm going to be doing commercial, uh, do I have to have some kind of a special cost for that? Uh, yeah, commercial is another one of those different animals, right? So we've got some commercial agents in here. Um, you, you would want to talk. I joined a group, so I'll just, she's just out of town, but when she gets back home. Yeah, so I, I talked to them about the, the marketing and branding. Sometimes I, I know that we are restricted from, in many cases, buying and selling commercial until we've been through class or if we have guidance or something. Um, there, there's a number of commercial agents in this office that can help you through um, understanding how to market that and, and, you know, of course, getting, you know, the buyer and seller stuff moving forward because it's, it's a very different ballgame and the rules are different and <laughs> lots of lots and lots of uh, potential issues. So we just have to be careful. Okay. And we don't have to post our uh, license. I don't believe so. No, okay. no. What's the MRP? So that is, Sorry. so last year when it was a little slow, I, I got a, uh, a military relocation professional oh. designation. Okay. Just I had, I had extra time. It was one of those little alphabet acronyms that I can throw at the end that says I've been doing this for longer than a day. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, you know, and, and me, you know, me being, me being a veteran, you know, I'm an army veteran. So that was an easy one for me. I just go through the class. I didn't have to study or cram or whatever and take the test and it was fine. Um, it's not a bad idea to, to get some of those, but they, you know, Dollar, I haven't brought any business in because I have an MRP endorsement. Okay. It's just something that, that I, I thought, yeah, I, I thought it, it couldn't hurt, but it, I mean, it wasn't, you know, it doesn't bring me in loads and loads of clients. Yeah. But maybe but someday it will. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and maybe one of your clients will ask what's in your market, yep. and you'll find out their are vet. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So we jumped ahead a little bit to the A, B, and C stuff. Oh, um, this is page five on this one. So, so we've, we've kind of covered that. The, why don't you, can you guys give me some recommendations on those B buyers and a good way for them to stay, 
to, for you to stay engaged with them and keep something moving forward? What are some options or even some obstacles that those, those B-class buyers are gonna have? Well, I guess you would put them on one of the smartphones, right? So okay, put them in, them. yep. You can connect them with yeah, yeah, and a lot of times those lenders have either they do it in-house with so the credit monitoring and restoration, or they can refer that out to somebody that if they have credit problems, you know, you can provide a solution for them to boost credit scores. And if you guys have been through any Demond's classes, any what? Say that again. So, so Demond, Demond Johnson is one of our preferred lenders. He's been in our office. A handful of times if you I, I can shoot you a contact for him he's worth yeah. he, he's with uh gentech and he he's given a couple of classes lately showing the difference between somebody that's got a you know a 630 credit score and a 680 or 690 credit score the implications of that with down payments interest rates all of those things those are something that you may want to market to those b or even c buyers saying, hey, you know, if credit's not where you want or if it's good enough to get a mortgage, but what if I give you the option to get a better interest rate to do something else? I've got lenders that can take a look at your credit and the, the improvements on that could mean, you know, percentage points, right? From, from in the twos to in the fours or who knows what, you know, what they're capable of, but something to bring those B buyers uh, some value and a reason to remember your name along with, uh, you know, cause you're not going to get paid anything until it closes. And if they're six months out, um, you know, you're playing a long game with them saying, Hey, you know, I'm going to invest in you, even though it's next year, but you know, it's a good thing to do for them for one. And it, you know, in those six months, while they are in the process of fixing their credit for these credit score ones, they may run across someone talking about buying a house and they may have someone immediately ready that's uh, what they call an A buyer. Mm -hmm. Hey, call my guy, mm -hmm. call my girl, because mm -hmm. they did this for me and we haven't even looked at a house yet. So, so those, those broad things that you can do that seem so far off on the horizon, it's a networking thing where we go back to that first page that had the percentages and 41% mm -hmm. refer people to, you know, bought their house through referrals. Mm -hmm. So you can be a part of that category to, you know, provide some value. What about, um, what about those B buyers that need to do home improvements before they sell? How can you guys help them there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You, you have a network of. You stay, you stay in the, in their mind, mm -hmm. you know, out of just just in the onward group you got 300 plus agents that have a large contractor network mm -hmm. so if you've got somebody that needs something that's going to take three or six months or whatever that is hey i can get you a couple of names for hardwood floors for drywall for paint for landscape all of those things you can bring them some value and help them on that journey to get them closer to where they're going to buy or sell. What about those C buyers? What can we do for them? No immediate need. Um, they may have a very exacting solution. Like they have to sell their property for a specific price or get on a street that they've always loved. That's that's absolutely something. I mean, some people want to be in, in one very small neighborhood. They want to be on a certain street and it may be a very long time until they have that opportunity. So what can we do there? Well, you can set up an auto email, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can set up an auto email in, in MLS. And when that one comes up, you know, I've, I've got, a few of those where people add, you know, they want to, they want to live. Yep. Yeah. But it's got to be a certain house in a certain neighborhood and that zip code. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to do anything until they find that house. I, you know, I've worked phones in here and some lady from Maryland calls and says, Hey, I want to live on this street. Just this one street. My friend lives on this street. I said, well, let me check. So you, you know, you check and say, 
Well, nothing, nothing's for sale right now. Um, what I can do is go door knock. I'll go door knock. She says, okay, great. Don't knock on this house or this house. One is my sister. One is my friend. I don't want them to know I'm moving. And I want to surprise them. Right? So, so you do the, you know, you do the research. <laughs> well, I, I can't, I can't question their motives. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to question their motives, but I, I definitely went, you know, we went door knocking and, you know, you, you get on Remind and you filter out the ones that just sold in the last couple of months. You, you know, you look at some of the, you can tell if they are rental houses, then in, in that case, you can present a different flyer to them, right? So take a couple of different flyers. Hey, I've got a client looking to be on this street. If you're interested in selling, let me know. And then the second flyer is, hey, are you tired of your landlord? Would you like to buy your own house and become your own landlord? And then you leave that on theirs. So you can cover the whole street, except for the ones that just recently bought for, you know, the high end of, you know, retail, and they're probably not willing to do anything within the first six, 12, 24 months. So, you, you know, you, you can leave a card on their door, but it probably isn't going to get you much uh, traction. So, but, oh, we got a Zoom. Okay, that's, uh, where are these flyers? Mm -hmm. Like door knocking flyers? Oh, yeah. Okay, so door knocking flyers are all something that that we you just create, right? And if you guys want to take a look at some of the ones that I've done, let me see if I can find some real quick. Uh, there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. I'll show you in a Zoom if you guys can see this. Oh, yeah, Hopefully, can, can, yeah, Canva is a very simple way to do that. It's it's quite uh, quite flexible, so you can get a little creative with it. And I can run through some of the ones that I've done. Uh, hopefully, Zoom, you guys can see this. Should be able yeah. to. Yeah. Trying to come up. <laughs> okay, so it's loading. So that's what we're looking at too. Okay. Um, we're going to skip that. I don't know what the pro version, oh, $13 a month, 14 days for free. All right. So, so some door knocking stuff today that I've done, uh, and Canva will save everything that, um, everything that you do as you do it, you can, you can do, oh, this is going to open new windows every time. Okay. Um, you can do some social media stuff on here and, you know, then add a nice caption on there and put that on in your business page. You can, I, I even designed uh, a yard sign on Canva. So I designed this yard sign and sent them, you know, kind of a basic template of what I want on that yard sign. I just listed, uh, I just signed a listing agreement yesterday for a house that's in a, a luxury price point, which is north of 700. So I wanted, uh, so, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I saw it coming and I wanted to do a, you know, a, a nicer yard sign. So you get a big single arm sign that's six foot tall and, and the sign will, will hang up on the, um, you know, from there. And so I did that. I've open house today was, you know, the flyer that you give somebody once they walk into the house. And I don't know what, okay. So I didn't finish that one. That one was just a work in progress. Um, Let's see what else we have. This is this is just a pretty simple flyer that I might have made for this is was this was that one on Hewland Heights. And I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'm not sure why it's not letting me zoom in. Um, but we went door knocking and this was, uh, so you get in a neighborhood and you go pass these out and say, hey, you know, this is just starting a conversation. So let me see if I have, we've got some just solds. You've got, so with, with KW, you've got, and I think they didn't save the final version of this, but you can draw arrows all over the places that, that you've helped people. And I think I had a, my, my latest one, and I'm not sure where it is. Uh, you know, Montana, it's got a, a Phoenix to Phoenix to Texas. We've got Washington to 
you know, there, there's a number of things that you can do. I don't know where, I don't know where the rest of them are. Let's see if I can find, there's another one for an open house. Pull that one out. And this was one for, for Amanda Gowdy. She, okay, this is not pulling up the right one. So I'm not sure what the deal is. Okay, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's what I'm trying to show you guys. But, but Canva is a pretty, good, pretty easy way to do that. Um, you can, it's got lots of templates and designs where you can run through and very easily, you know, cause it's gonna, this is a pre-populated one that that I hadn't started. I opened it and then it saves it. So uh, it, it's a nice template for you guys to, to start and see some of the options there. And, and fully editable, you can upload the pictures and, you know, the Keller Williams Fort Worth or, you know, whichever, whichever one you want to choose. So that's a, that's kind of a quick example of some of those door knock. And, and it really, we need a good door knock and the flyer is not going to matter as much as talking to somebody and having a, a reason to talk to them, getting your value across to them. And if that's, you know, if you're trying to put someone in that neighborhood, you may be able to, to list their house off market. You may be able to, to have expert tips on how the house is going to bring you the top dollar and give you the most for it. Um, there's, a number of ways you can get across that. You just need to start the conversation and have a, you know, a value to give to them. So, and then, okay. So the, the second, second part of that, you know, once you, if we're going back through to that, that lead gen model with marketing leads, contacts, cultivate, you know, appointments, and then you're actively looking before you get under contract, Buyer's rep and the buyer's rep on there is going to be different for all of you, I'm sure. When to sign that, when to have. Uh, commercial is very different. Commercial is typically a retainer and a buyer's rep before you do anything. Um, in my experience with residential customers and a buyer's rep agreement, if you meet a stranger and you want to go start looking at houses, sometimes they're very apprehensive about signing a buyer's rep agreement. Sometimes they will refuse and go find a different agent. That's happened to me. Um, one of the better ways around that, and, and, and some agents are going to only work with clients that they're under a buyer's rep with, and some like myself, I don't, and, and this may not be the best of recommendations, but I don't typically do that until, um, you know, until we submit an offer. I, I think, um, you're going to need to evaluate that. Some of the agents in here, some of the Ignite teachers will do the buyer consult and they'll go over everything in detail from start to finish about process and all of these things and sign the buyer's rep right there. It's very good. Uh, it's a good practice and it definitely, it, you guys all understand why you would want someone to sign a buyer's rep far in advance, right? I mean, it's, I don't need to preach that, uh, you know, it's for your protection, their protection, all of those things. I just, you know, my experience, you know, you get the IBS and you have them sign that and you can look at some houses and if they want to work with me, they'll continue to do so to put an offer in. I'll send that offer and the buyer's rep all in the same envelope and have them sign that. Most cases, sometimes I've had them sign, you know, prior to if it's a, if it's a longer project and they are going to demand some more things from me then that's a, you know, a conversation you need to have with them. Hey, I'll continue to do these things. I'd like to sign a buyer's rep. We're going to date it for a long time from now because your journey is going to be a long one. What's a typical length for the buyer? If you are, if you are sending it with a contract to make an offer, I'll put three months. If it's one of those longer ones, you can do 12 months. It just, it just depends on you know, what that client needs and what the expectations that you have for them to get across the closing table are. So you can, you can stretch it out as far as they're comfortable with. 
but the farther you go, of course, the more pushback you may receive from, uh, you know, a client. It's it's a, you know, it's one of those where you guys are gonna have to evaluate as you go and figure out the best way for you to do that. If you, you know, and I do recommend having a very good, you know, consultation agreement with them. You can have them come in the office seven days a week. Somebody's gonna be here that, you know, it's safe when you meet strangers. You can outline the whole, you know, what's needed to purchase a house, what's needed to start looking, what do I expect from you? Um, you know, and you can hold them accountable to doing, you know, their own research for neighborhoods or cities, schools, because we're not going to talk, we're not going to, the other thing we don't do is, is give opinion on safe schools, all of those things, right? You have them do their own homework, you can provide them resources to look that up. But when, when you bring a buyer on, you are also asking them to do some of the work too. It's not just, you know, you cannot be the gospel for everything that they do. There's, there's certain responsibilities for them that they're going to have to do. And if you got someone that wants to live within 40 miles of here, you're going from Weatherford to Dallas. And if they don't have any idea, they need to go figure out, drive those areas. You can send them, you can send them 40 mile radius of here hey, here's 10 houses, go look at all these different neighborhoods. I don't have, I don't have the time to drive six or eight hours in a day with you to the neighborhoods that you may not like. Let's, let's narrow it down and figure out where you want to work, where you want to live. And we can, you know, once we have it narrowed down, I'm happy to take a trip to Weatherford and look through several houses, but I, I can't go to Weatherford and then Dallas on the same day because you haven't been to either of those enough to understand if you want to live there or not. So, so, you know, having that buyer's rep signed is something that is part of those expectations where you can assign them some level of responsibility for what they're doing. I have a question. Uh, like when you're meeting a client, I know we have access to the other offices. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, so I would just coordinate with the, the team leader or, you know, the front desk or the, the MCA down there and just say, Hey, I've got this coming up. What do I need to do to get in there? And they should be happy, especially if it's an onward group, you should be able to have reasonably the same access that you have at this office, which is anytime, but you have to be able to get in and open the doors. And if there's a way to, to do that or have someone meet you there or something that shouldn't be an issue. You just need to work it out ahead of time. Okay. I'm sure they'd be happy to. I mean, if we had someone coming from, you know, from, from South Lake or Weatherford that wants to be into this office and, you know, someone was on phones, you know, you can call that office. I don't know if they have people on duty all the time like we do, mm -hmm. but someone, you know, someone even in the onward group would be able to help you out. Oh, yeah, because I had a client mm -hmm. that they live in kind of Arlington and mm -hmm. I was showing houses on crowded and stuff like that. Yep. And I'm like, oh, but somebody in had access, I didn't even offer to meet there because I'm like, <laughs> yeah, just just reach out and ask somebody, and and they would be able to get you in there, to, you know, either open the door for you or hang out with you a little bit and okay. go through it with a, a client. Mm -hmm. All right, what else we got? Zoom. Do you guys have any questions or comments on anything that we've talked about? Hi, uh, I want to ask one question. Um, the one you did just now for the open house uh, flyer, yep. that's the same one we can do it from MLS, from the Metrotex, right? Yeah, so you can you can do that. The, the one thing that I will recommend is, are we, are we talking your listing or somebody else's listing? <clears throat> uh, someone else. Okay, so someone else's listing, you have, um, you have the ability to, let's see, let me see if I can find it. <coughs> subscribe to subscribe to list reports, right? And list reports is when I list a house, it's going to give me an automated uh, package of marketing stuff, right? 
And if I can find a good example of that, hopefully you guys can see this stuff. Let's see. Yeah, we can see. No, these are all pictures. Let me see if I can find. Okay, let's just go to, let's go to list reports. List reports is, for, for me, it's free. And some people, you can partner with lenders, you can partner with other maybe title companies and stuff. But one of the better ways that I've found for, for the marketing for open houses is uh, list report stuff. So if I go to, let me see if I can find it. Okay, so, so these are some of the houses that I've listed. If we look at, the marketing kit that, and as soon as it goes active this reports pulls all this information puts it all together and delivers it to you all for free if it's oh. is that a free app this is listreports.com i'm sorry say that again Emma. And if, is this a free app listreport.com yeah, yeah list reports if you go to list reports and sign up um you can once you have a list and go live, then it produces all of these things, right? And a bunch of these are for download. A bunch of these are, you can print out just solds under contracts, uh, open house sign-in sheets. Here's a property report. Let's, uh, let's look at this one and see what this looks like. But if you've got, if you've got another house, that you're going to do an open house for just ask that agent hey can i get the list report stuff if you have it if not can you sign up real quick free and oh. then it, it automates it for you and it and it just dumps these kinds of marketing materials into yeah. it, it just i get a text or an email i can't sometimes both from list report saying this is this is what we made hopefully you like it but it's free it? MLS. MLS. Yep. So as soon as it goes active on MLS, yep. Yeah, these are all free. I don't pay list reports. Yep. But it also gives you lots of area stuff too. So when you're doing an open house, if you've been in open houses, hopefully you guys have because you've been doing some homework and research and checking stuff out that other agents do. Uh, and, and mind you, going into open houses that are other brokerages is great because it gives you the chance to see what someone else is doing outside of our kw bubble and it gives you a chance to recruit you know i don't know about that do you when you do open houses do you do stuff to give like i know some people so, have said like oh, we do mimosas or donuts or stuff like that do you do that or I, I don't personally some some do um lots of agents will have the whole drinks and champagne and you know all that stuff some do giveaways, um, raffles, all those things. If they can get you to sign in, I personally, I don't. I just, I just do the open house. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but List Reports has a wealth of information, and it gives you lots of, lots of details, lots of information that you can print pieces and parts, and you know, twenty golf courses within ten miles. When you go door knock, you can print out this one particular page and say, hey. If your friends are golfers or, or bring me a neighbor, bring me someone that's a golfer. They, they may want to live here. Um, 60 restaurants within five miles and it breaks them all down. But these are all things that, that make it very easy to, to do. Uh, to, you know, you've got postcards, you've got sign writers, you've got, let's see, and we'll cruise through some of these. See, and then this is this is all stuff that they've done for me, right? That I don't have. This is this, these are the kind of things that I'll print out for an open house and just leave, you know, at the house because you have. <laughs> yeah, it's called yesterday afternoon. I threw that at one of the um, uh, apps, whatever the group I joined. Uh, she contacted me and said, "Hey, do you want to show this house for these?" clients from California. I did two houses for her last weekend and I ended up doing two more yesterday. But the second house yesterday, they had a flyer in there with MLS. 
And then they had another flyer front and back inside printed with a picture of the house and some information on the back of it for some more information. So I'm wondering if they got that information. From Does it look familiar? Website. Yeah. Does so it, it was kind of nice. And they even had a like a three ring binder with all the, mm -hmm. they even had all the stuff put together in there and it was on the bar. And yep. Pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Like it, the whole inspection and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The survey, all that stuff was in the book. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got lots and lots of different ways to, lots of ways to market. Um, just sold. See, I haven't looked at this since I sold this house. Shame on me. Um, I may not be able to see this because it's asking me to pair with a loan officer. And they will charge that loan officer money to, to partner because, you know, for whatever reason. Um, somebody money. I, I'm pretty sure that the loan officer is the one that pays the bill on the, the sharing and the upgrades and all that stuff. No idea what it is. Um, promotional flyer without price. You got lots of stuff. Infographics is a good one. We've seen some of those, but that's, um, yeah. Do you plan on with just one lens or do you have multiple? For this, for I mean, list uh, reports, just, it's a, no, just in general for your business. So I, I like to provide my clients choices. Uh, I, I don't ever want to be the one that recommends one particular. And then if something goes wrong, well, I was forced into this one. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Give them choices, make them. That's, that's with lenders. That's with inspection, home warranty, insurance, all of those things. Give them two or three choices and you can recommend, you know, I, I've worked with all three of these people. They're all good. Give a call, partner with the one that you feel comfortable with, but they all will do a good job for you in my experience, right? So never never say this is the only one that I'm gonna recommend because you know you can't control other people and you can't control transactions. Give yourself some some room to say, hey, you know, I gave you some choices based on uh, experience and between myself and the brokerage and he's a preferred lender through KW, that's a whole nother thing, uh, you know, another criteria that you need to get through. So give them options and um, good recommendations. Okay. And about um, the, the Damien uh, person that, or, um, that you were they, talking oh, about. Oh, um, Damon? Damon, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Would you be able to send that mess, that to me? Let me find what I'll text you his his card. How's that? What's a good let me get to what's Angie, a good phone, what's a a good phone, phone number? Yep. 682 433 2576. Okay, so there is. I just sent you his card and I can put uh, put in this chat. Let's see what I can find. Got it, thank you. It's good if you guys have seen uh, you know, a lot of that stuff on the Onward Group or even Noelle lately, she's got some collaborations with them. He came to the Christmas thing last week. Um, really good though. So there's, there's the mon. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, okay. What else do we want to cover? You guys have questions? Uh, what about MLS and setting up somebody? Oh, yeah. You guys know how to do all that stuff? I haven't even done like MLS training yet. So you, you can't get on MLS? No, not yet. Okay, so one of the one of the recommendations that I have with um, clients and buyers and all of the things that, that help you with keeping track of people is to, you know, when you get into MLS and you're gonna send somebody houses, mm -hmm. I always put them in as a contact. And, and this is why. So, so the, the Netris recommend or 
Netris keeps track of everything that you do, everything that you send out. If you have those people and there's a contact. Now this doesn't talk to command and it's not part of the CRM, but this is just the, the Netris one. When I send an email to any of these contacts, it tells me who I sent it to. And then when they visit to look at the, what I've sent them, it gives me everything that when they've seen it, when they visited. Um, so this, this gentleman here, is on a search for houses in a certain zip code, right? I've got them on one auto email. And since I started that, it's been 44 emails that he's got. Wow. So, so this is Netris, not from MLS. This is Netris. Yep. So this is all in MLS. And it's a, in my, my recommendation for you guys to stay on top of buyers, mm -hmm. this is an easy way to do it because you're in MLS anyway, searching for stuff for them. When you send them houses, it tells me what's in it. It tells me when I sent it and it tells me when he's looked at it, right? So when you get a client, hold on. Um, ah, okay, so Danielle, if you can see this, I'll show you the best way. There, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, there is a, a Go MLS app that mirrors that is the Netris, right? So if you guys don't have Go MLS yet, the app, you should get it because it's a you can schedule on the fly as you go. You log on with the same credentials as you do for Netris. Um, Go MLS, the app looks like, and I'll show you guys. So if you can see that that one on the right over there. In the middle. Yep, in the middle on the right. That's the that's a go MLS. It's a house with a magnifying glass. Oh, that right, it, can I see that far? Oh, oh, is sure. That, is it this one here? Yep. Okay. Go MLS one word uh, from the App Store does does iOS and Android. That is that's the best way on the fly to book to, to look at stuff on MLS. It's not as good as the Netris website but it is very handy for when you're on the fly you can look up stuff it's going to give you most all of the information uh from mls so when you're in a house and you didn't you didn't print anything out for it you can jump on mls on the go mls app and pull up that thing and it's going to give you all the information for proactive stuff it's got pretty good filters on it um if you are looking for uh um, so the Kelly apps in process and yeah. improving command, I think they're all going to combine all those. I'd give it some time until they get that figured out. I've had a hard time with myself and with clients in the Kelly app. So I honestly, I don't use it. So to me, it's like, I would use this and then I would use what you're showing us today, but to use command, it's like double. What do you, what are you using command for? What do you mean? Well, to keep track of clients. Yeah. So this is. So keeping track of clients this way is is just to make sure that I'm sending them the houses that they want to look at mm -hmm. and that they're actually looking at things. So I've got some that, you know, that may or may not look at things in a timely fashion. Um, this one, she's been on the list for a very long time um, looking for stuff. But, you know, when we send stuff to her, sometimes she sees it same day. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's the next day. Not real, not real um, eager to go jump on this, but she, you know, I also talked to her yesterday and she said, hey, we got to put this on hold because I am, she's a mortgage lender. She says, I am forming my own brokerage, so I'm going to be self-employed for a little while. I'm going to have to give it a bit before I can buy a house. She's in Colorado. She wants a lake house here. Um, cool. Um, yeah, no problem. I just need to turn off and I, I can do that now. Um, but if we are on MLS and we're putting together to the question that was just asked, if we're, oh, look at that. That's a pretty one. Wow. Um, yeah, this is the kind of this is the kind of stuff she's looking for. So this was 860 and it's on the lake. Well, that's that's a pond. OK, yeah. really nice house, though. So if we're looking um, if we're looking to do schedule some showings and you're on on Netris, mm -hmm. most all of these listings are going to have a schedule a showing button down here, right? 
So if you're if you're trying to book one showing, then as this comes up, schedule a single showing. Okay. And when you schedule a showing, it's going to tell you all of the things that are available, and you can you can pick whatever time you want. You can make it, you know, one o'clock from. Let's see. So where does this have? Showing one o'clock. Uh, where's the start time? Okay, from twelve o'clock to one o'clock. The orange triangle means that it's going to require confirmation on this or approval. So you'll submit the request, and then they'll get back to you. There's also a in in conjunction with the the Go MLS app, you also have a showing time app. So you can get on showing time and cruise through that app and. Uh, you can you can look at your request appointments. You can look at your confirmed ones. It'll give you directions from there. It takes you to mine. Takes me to Google Maps, which is nice. Sometimes some of these will, will populate the the Apple Map address thing. And um, but the Showing Time app is also a nice one. Uh, I'm sorry. So that's an alternative. Do, do you Thank have to you like, that set it up right there when you were showing? Okay. Because I have. What I have done, I have called the, no, I have done it through showing, showing time, but I haven't done it through the MLS. This, yeah, so you can, you can call showing time and you can talk to them and say, hey, I want MLS or address. I want to show it for four o'clock tomorrow. And they're going to say, D -d 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 -d. okay, yes, yes or no, or request it or confirm it's a go and show, whatever the case is. There's no difference between doing it here or in showing time. It's just, this takes you to showing time. So this is, it's a direct link to showing time access, right? So you are doing it through showing time. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it gets better though. So when, <laughs> stay with me here. So so when we get, um, when we get a couple of houses that that we want to see, we can we can now schedule a multiple a, a batch of houses if they've got three or four they want to look at in a neighborhood. We're going to add those to a showing cart. Okay. And then this is, okay, there we go. So this is, this comes up today on the 20th, and then you have to do a description. And okay. So that just puts it in, that puts it in your, your, your shopping basket, if you will. Um, we're going to go pick another one that's a couple miles away. We're going to add this one too because they want to see this one. We are going to add this to the test showing cart next. And that one stays there. And we're going to do one more that's, we'll put some distance on it and I'll show you what this thing does. It, it draws, well, it, it routes the times. And it does it does the math in between showings and, and all kinds of stuff. So, so if we also add this one to a showing cart, now now we've got a map, right? Or now we've got three we've got three in there that they want to see, and it has yeah it has it has the route. Let's see if we can one two three, so we can we can change these if we want to go oh, yep if we want to go three and two let's see how we okay how do we update the the search let's see oh, is there the little thing up at the upper left yes. upper left yeah. yeah that's it you got it so so you can do this right and then you can organize your showings. If you want to go one, two, three, that way, that's fine. You can do it that way. Uh, but it's going to tell you uh, 5.3 miles, 13 minutes, 6.6 .6 miles, 13 minutes in between those. Mm -hmm. And then with it already being 10 o'clock, we can't book anything before 10. So if we want to see this one at one, you know, from 115 to 215, we'll save that. And so typically, the, you know, if you have a showing appointment, you are entitled the time to be in that house that whole time, whatever you can approve. Uh, some of these, 
some of these will be overlapping. So you're going to be in there sharing it with someone else. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they request. Um, one yeah, only they'll only allow one in there at a time. And so if you're if you're in here and you schedule for an hour and you've got an hour, so you can even overlap some of these two to two fifteen. We'll save that one. And for this one, we start this one and we go for an hour. So it gives you. Um, well, that can be a two hour showing. So that one's that one. Yeah, some of these are that's an hour and 15 minutes. So then you can move. You can you can schedule those showing blocks and then you send a request and it requests all three of those at the same time. And all three of these are going show. So if we were to request these, we'd be approved for all three of these immediately. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, right. Sometimes if the appointment type is uh, an appointment where they have to confirm it, it's going to have that. You hit the send requests and it's going to give you the waiting on confirmation. But that is, um, in my experience, that is the best way to book showings because you can you can move them around and whatever else. It's all right there straight from MLS for the and most was, part. And if it was, I'm sorry, but if there was another showing that was already scheduled, you'd see it on this. It'd be blacked out. You wouldn't be able to. Yeah. So you wouldn't. Before the 10 o'clock when you're showing. Yep. So, so they, they cut off showings at nine o'clock at night on these going shows. But if it was the reserved, um, if something was already reserved, this would be blacked out. Okay. And you wouldn't be able to choose that one if it's not overlapping. So it'll, it'll tell you what you have to work with. And when you get into this screen and you've got, you know, a number of things to juggle, you know, if this one was blacked out for this time and you had to move them around, you could do that and then, and then update. And then it would, it would re recalibrate all the driving and all those things and you, you make it work. And, yep. So hopefully that answered the question that, that was asked. Um, Danielle, uh, that's, and then for the most part, they're all on showing time. There, there's some, there's some brokers that have their own service where you have to, you have to call them or you have to text or whatever it is. Sometimes you will, um, some of the limited listings, you have to book a schedule with the owner, but it'll provide all the information in there for, uh, the showings, right? So just depends, but if you're lucky and you've got five houses to look at, then hopefully all five are on showing time and you can look. The, yeah, so this is Saturday. So this is beginning Saturday the 23rd, which was a month ago. And this one's still under contract. So let's see. Yeah. Looking at looking at the let's see this is what's the occupancy on this one I can't see it uh, so but that, that's a good way for to book showings um, so when you when you schedule those and, and you're sending stuff from MLS I always like to put contacts in there and you can track these contacts. That's a good way to keep track of all of the things that they've looked at. And you can see if they're seeing what you do. Um, not again, not command, but for me, every time I send an email on a property, I'll put them in as a contact in MLS because it is, it's very simple. And if we wanted to, if we wanted to look at this one and send that to a new contact, it's, it's as simple as creating a new contact, first name, last name, email. You can change the salutation to whatever you want. Hi, hello, dear, custom, whatever. Save that. And then once you, that's it. Three pieces of information. You need first, last, and email. Mm -hmm. And then when you do that, then they're going to show up in these two, recently used and then recent visitors. And you know if they're looking at stuff. So they can, they can like. They can heart um, some of these and I don't have a good, I don't think I can do that, but, but they can like or dislike a lot of these too. So it just depends on um, if they're gonna be engaged or not. So that's, that's something else that you can cover in your, your listing presentation, your, your, not your listing presentation, I'm sorry, your, your buyer consultation, how's that? Yeah. So that's, um, 
that's the majority of kind of find and win a buyer. Um, the, the lead gen on there, we've talked about some of those. Um, do you guys want to, did I miss anything no, on, on lead gen stuff? <clears throat> do we want to talk about some more examples? Okay, so there, that you're going to, here's the thing with, with real estate is, is everybody that you run across has uh, a need for housing. Everybody's a potential client, right? Everybody's got somewhere that they need to live, sleep, um, buy, sell, rent. You know, you, we can do all of those. I've, I've had, you know, lease and rental transactions and, you know, buy and sell. It just depends on what you run across. I have, I have run across listings from yard sales. You go to a yard sale or an estate sale and you ask, why are you having a yard sale? Are you moving? Are you, you know, whatever you do. And if you talk with, you know, sincerity, because you're curious, because, you know, why not? I mean, I, I like finding deals at yard sales too. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, you can find treasure yeah. there, yeah. but if you go there and, and here's an example from, <clears throat> yeah, I guess it was last year, last year, um, go to yard sale and, and a little old lady is there having a yard sale well why are you having it? well I, I i need to i need to get into a retirement home okay so you're going to sell your house do you own the house yeah do you have a realtor no i don't even know where to start i don't even know what to do yeah she's well tell you what i'm, I'm a realtor i'd like to at least um run some numbers for you and and take a look at see if i can help you so she said, well, that's fine, but I'm not doing anything until I find somewhere to live. I need a retirement home. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me what you're looking for. So she rattles off, you know, two or three different criterias. And I go find a assisted living, you know, a retirement home for her that's two miles away from her house, which is kind of where she wanted to be because she likes the area, doesn't drive far. And set up an interview, take her, meet her at the, you know, that first meeting and you know, they've got availability, it fits her budget, she likes the place. Okay, I can sell my house. So we list the house and we sell it and then it goes quick. And, you know, yeah, I call movers and help her get moved and packed and all of those things. And then her neighbor is like, hey, I need to do the same thing. Oh, no. But I'm on a waiting list for, until March or something or whenever that was where she could finally get into the retirement home that she's been where her mom is. And she's like, can, can your guy sell my house too? Mm -hmm. And she's like, I, I guess. And she gave me the number and I went over and same thing. I didn't have to go find her somewhere, but I provided, you know, the help movers, packers, helped her sell some stuff, all that stuff. So your, your lead gen stuff, you know, typically, and, and here's, here's the, the, the re recurring thing in, in my year and a half is, one is related to the next, right? You, you do an open house. You generate a lead from that one on someone else that wants to sell something. You put something under contract. Their friend or their neighbor's like, hey, that seemed to go really well. How can I do that? Well, that's easy. Let's, let's go look, you know. Um, you have to capitalize on the opportunities that you have. We, and and if you don't have anything under contract, if you don't have any buy, sell, any of that stuff, you've got an office full of agents that have houses that are under contract, houses that have closed, investors, you know, all kinds of stuff. You can leverage, you know, through door knocking, through advertisements, all of the brokerage that, well, you know. So, and if you see a house that you want to door knock around or run a Facebook campaign on, let them know. Give them a call and say, hey, I'd like to do some marketing. Can I, can I run an ad on your listing? And they're most likely going to say, absolutely. Go nuts. Hey, can I do an open house? Can I go door knock in that neighborhood? Um, some agents are territorial. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be happy to see you in my neighborhood. Um, some, some are. It just depends, right? But um, everything's related to the next one. Your, your client that just bought a house has somebody that is also looking to buy or sell or whatever the case is. So pay attention to 
you know, everything that happens during that transaction. And that's going to bleed over to the next one. You just have to, you have to be perceptive enough to understand, catch some of those conversations, ask, you have to ask for things, ask for business. You know, when you go to closing, um, hey, you know, thanks for, you know, hopefully things went well in your opinion. Um, if you have the opportunity to refer somebody, I would really appreciate the, the vote of confidence and however you want to word that. You have to ask though. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's not hard. You just got to talk to people and get into that, get into that repetition where you're comfortable talking about things as they come up naturally in conversation. Don't force anything. Be you. People are drawn to you for a number of different reasons. And just have the conversations. I have a question um, about asking other realtors about open houses and stuff like that. Um, for you, um, what has been your experience on asking people that have like groups? Do they just stay within the groups or would they let you do open houses even though they have multiple people working? Like a team or a group yeah, should. Yeah, a team or group. Uh -huh. so, would, they, would they let you do open houses? They, no. So that they should have they should have enough people to do that, but within their group, I, I don't know that I don't know that I've ever done an open house for a group. Here, here's the other here's the other thing is we cannot do an open house for a different brokerage. We may not be able to do one for another Keller Williams outside of the owner oh. group. You would have to ask them and make sure that it's okay that somebody that us from this brokerage can do an open house for a Weatherford KW. It, it depends on insurance and policies and all those things. We can't let a different brokerage host an open house for us. Okay, brokerage policy. Um, but there's a lot of agents in the onward group mm -hmm. and you can do a lot of open houses. You can ask for, you can ask for a lot of uh, opportunity there. So. Is there a listing that shows all of the onward um, locations and their contact information? Yeah, it should be on the should be on the onward page, right? Oh. Let's see. Uh, oh, I'm not sure, but let's see. So So the the KW onward group has three three offices, right? And and boat club the boat club phone number rings here. So when you call unless you have a direct line, the the boat club in here are the same. So, I joined the book. Okay, same. Yeah, so it should be the same brokerage as this one. It's just a different physical address, but uh, numbers and all that stuff should be the same. So it does have. This is the Johnson County one. What did you go outside? So this is just this is just the. Johnson County. Well, kwarmergroup.com. And then you do have off the offices tab up there on the top. Um, that's got, oh, yep, yeah, it's got all three of the offices. Oh, Boat Club's the only, the fourth one. Oh, there's not one in uh, Henderson. That's Johnson, that's Johnson, Johnson County. County. Oh, yep. that's in Burger? Mm -hmm. oh. Yep. That's what I said. That makes sense. It's I, a little bit forward, further, I think. I haven't been there. Yeah, I think it's. Yeah. I don't yeah, know, to be honest. It, so I but there's a there's a calendar for it. Uh, I don't see the like the the address and phone number, but I mean, it's not hard to find. We can we can get it. I know that there's. So South Lake Office is not an onward. No, onward is the onward. The onward group is is just. Yep, West Fort Worth Boat Club and Johnson County. Okay, Zoom, do you guys have anything else that, that I missed or you want to talk about? No? Maybe. But what was that? I missed it. <laughs> do you guys have anything else that we, we, I can answer that we can talk about? Did I miss anything that we want to go over? Um, I think we covered up for right now, Link. Okay. Yeah. 
Got it. Well, we don't have to uh, we don't have to drag out to eleven. I mean, if we can, if you guys have anything, we can stick around a little bit longer on Zoom, and I'll be here in the classroom for a bit to go over some stuff. But um, the other day they were saying just like that rule that one of the agents here put together like a small, um, like a door knocking gift, I guess, like mm -hmm. a little pop roll with a card or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, pop buys, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some things you've done, or what are that work? <laughs> Have you done that? For, done, like, um, for for door knocking. Door knocking, I just do, I just do flyers. Um, for like the pop buys where you'll have the title companies or certain other people come by and put, put stuff together. You can do, you know, you, they like to do it once a month and keep it seasonal, right? So Thanksgiving, next, next week's going to be Christmas. Um, January is going to be fitness or something who knows february is valentine's day so if, if you just keep it towards you know the calendar or the seasons then you can i mean if, if you're good enough to catch some of the title companies in here or wherever they do those they'll help you put together you know 10 or 20 of those but you know a business card with um you know a candy bar or any you know and yeah candy canes for christmas or you know anything that anything that will help them that's you know it doesn't have to be large it can be candy canes it can be you know hershey's kisses for valentine's day or something who knows um something to give you a reason to get in front of those clients mm -hmm. is all it takes and and the the pop buys are typically for people that you already know that you're just thanking for doing business with you in the past or maybe doing business in the future um something to keep top of mind so it, it doesn't really matter uh, what it is it doesn't have to be expensive it doesn't have to be a hand printed a note you know with mm -hmm. something on there uh, kind of whatever whatever it is that you want to do mm -hmm. so so some of it as you were talking about how like I'm not so I've worked in commercial for nothing but I've done it in corporate so this is different like going out and actually physically finding a business <laughs> because before, well you can do the same thing with commercial go knocking on business doors yeah mm -hmm. but um i guess what i'm because i'm going to do both but mm -hmm. i'd rather be commercial than house i'm not like the i don't have the patience for like the emotional stuff that comes with house purchases okay <laughs> i just want to know do you, is this a deal you're going to sign or not move I don't actually find it hard. Yeah, I don't actually find it hard in commercial to get I ABS signed. Mm -hmm. That's really easy because they can't do it. They can't find the rooms because they don't have those. They don't have the, they don't have all those things. You know, they can go into the MLS or they can drive around and maybe see a space here and there. But even when they find it, they get they don't get a lot of um, cooperation from brokers. Brokers are Basically, you know, yeah, we some we, we've got yeah. a really we got a really good broker. Yeah, some can no, I mean out there like oh. uh, CBR, like other brokerage okay. firms that sure. are representing commercial. Like, oh, they start asking them questions that they know clients don't know. Like, well, how much? Uh, you know, what's your your triple net expectation? What do you want? Anyway, they so they'll call me and they'll say, you know, I try to call this number and they'll send me a picture of a uh, retail connection or some sign that they saw. And um, she's like, I just, I can't talk to these people. Can you call them? And I'll, I'll call them for them, of course. Um, but that's why the IABS or the, the commercial tenant buyer rep is not hard to get signed by them. It's because they just want help. They just want somebody to help them find their purpose. And even if when they know where it's at, they don't want to contact the brokers themselves. Um, but in, in residential, it's so different. It's like, like you said, you don't want to be pushy, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not a sales, I'm not a car salesman, you know what I mean? I'm mm -hmm. not like, hey, you're not a snake oil salesman. Yeah, and I'm not like, bubbly, and I'm not like a cheerleader type person, but, but I can help, but I'm happy to help people. You know well, and there's, there's plenty of, so you, <laughs> So everyone in here is going to have their own niche, their so own. Kind of nervous about that. Well, well, yeah, but 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 think about it from your perspective, right? You have you have a personality that's going to fit 
a portion of the market. So do you, and yours is different and yours is different. You guys all have very unique um, client bases and niches and you know your, your personal experience is gonna drive where you meet people and what kind of buyers or sellers those are. You sound more like the, the yes or no, the investor, fix and flips, contractors, builders. You don't have to go knock on some old lady's door that may or may not want to sell and has to have drag all our emotions into it. If you don't want to deal with it, fine. Go find so it. I'm actually going to try to take a class to mm -hmm. learn how to sell just new homes. Because all you got to do is go show them a new home and then that yeah, yeah, that class could be taught quickly. Yeah. That, that's simple. Yeah. Uh, but but that's, you know, that's one thing. The, the people that buy new homes are in a whole different category too. Mm -hmm. and, and they... That may come with a bunch of challenges. People yeah. that people that want to go find something that doesn't exist on the market, look and look and look and make offers and get rejected. And then, okay, well, what about a new house? That has to be perfect. Let's go look at it. I've done. I've been down that road too. <laughs> uh, you know, some people some people are very hard to please. Um, for you, not interested in you know all the emotions and things that come with somebody that lives in a house and has a lot of That's sentimentals. You're gonna you're gonna find out, that, you know, that maybe you're better more towards that commercial, you know, the investors, the the people that that it's like to fix. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a numbers thing for them, yeah. like commercial. Well, and that's what that's where you'll probably find more success, right? Is when you work with, so so I would reach out to lots of contractors, lots of home improvement, lots of investors, and that would be something you're probably a lot more comfortable. Some people are not comfortable with working with investors because they're different. Their, their needs, their expectations, they, you know, some people like the conversation and, um, the, you know, the camaraderie that you develop through that transaction, investors don't care. They, you know, they'll, some of those, and, and I've run across this too, is they won't sign a buyer's rep unless it's got that particular address on it we'll go buyer's rep for the address that you're making an offer on, but I'm not signing one far and wide. Mm -hmm. Fine. Yeah. Happy to do that. If I bring you a deal and we, you know, we submit a contract, you're going to sign one for that one. And, you know, my feelings don't get hurt because I can't find them. You know, I can't, I can't lock them into a buyer's rep agreement for mm -hmm. DFW, mm -hmm. but I can for the one we're making an offer on. So you don't have to work with anyone you don't want to. You know, you, you find the niche that works best for you and excel in it. That's it. You just got to find it. Sometimes it's hard to find. Yeah. I'll let you know when I find mine. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and you'll see. I mean, you'll see. You'll enjoy the transaction and working with customers and buying and selling and, you know, all the things that come along with that. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes you won't like working with certain people and you'll shy away from that next time. So you say you've been doing this for a year and a half. Did you just start doing it full time right away, or when you? Were yeah, for the most part, I was I was exiting a, a business I was in, so I had lots of free time. Uh, it was connected to to oil field and infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So when you know early last year when things started getting a little weird, uh, lots of time to reevaluate and change and do different things and. And I, I was lucky enough to have a friend in that industry that had just gotten his license and said, hey, go get yours. Um, you know, I think that I'm going to do good. I think you'll do the same thing. So kind of recommended to, to just go get a real estate license. Okay. I got time. So I did that. And, um, you know, no experience aside from, you know, buying and selling my own houses that I've lived in and then rent it out. Um, which was limited, um, you know, not a, not a, no network or relationships or anything that I brought with me here. It's just, you know, I've been kind of on my own Island mm -hmm. two and a half years doing whatever. And you, you learn to, to find buyers and, and win over buyers. Cause you, you just, you have to, if you're going to be successful. So you, you'll find ways and it, sometimes it takes, talking to lots and lots of people and different methods. And I'm not one that uh, does a lot of cold calls. You know, I don't do a lot of the phone calls. 
You don't have to, you know, you don't have to, but you, you're gonna have to do something. It's very nice to hear experiences like yeah. that, you know, because it's overwhelming. Like, yeah. you know, you won't do it. I mean, mm -hmm. you just like, because you're so lost. Sometimes. And we were just talking about all the different programs you have to download, all the different mm -hmm. ways that you have to get your information. It, it's overwhelming at, at, at first. Yeah. Do, do a couple of them and it gets a lot easier and become more proficient and you actually appreciate and, and like all of the things that you have to use right have a yep yep you use all those tools there's there's a a lot of tools that i don't use that i maybe should but there's so many out there what works for you yeah. right and yep. that's what's most important yep. I, I know what's and learning, yeah. what uses. like yeah. learning today from what you did today mm -hmm. i learned more today than I did in three of the classes combined. But it's like you have to learn from the experience of yep. others. Yep. You know? And and I, you know, I went through Ignite when I went through that, I I had a I had a, a large, I had like a six-week window where mm -hmm. I finished all my my education and my pretests and all that stuff, and I was ready to schedule for Pearson. They shut down everything because of COVID. So I had six weeks and KW was like, you can come come on, you, you know, you, you're not licensed, but you can, you can join and you can go through Ignite. So I was going through Ignite, I'm licensed. Oh, yeah, that's and I was many, well, kind of, because I couldn't get on MLS. I couldn't yeah, get on Netris. Yeah. I had to just watch, right? Yeah. But I was, many times I was like the only person in the Ignite class because they, they weren't allowing, uh, they weren't allowing to take tests and become licensed. So there was no one coming on. They didn't have the, the annual influx. And yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I had one-on-one -on -one for, for most of all my classes, but I, I wasn't able to, I had to take notes and kind of understand. So when it came back time to put my business together and do the, the practices, like I've showed some of those to you guys, it was all from memory and just figuring it out. And, hey, this works. You know, there's, there's another thing that I like to do on, and I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but search, when you go to search to residential, I always go detailed. I never do quick preference you know you, but when you do detailed so two things you have you have these pre-selected boxes over on the left right active coming soon active contingent and depending on most likely your first most likely yours looks like this right right mm -hmm. if you don't like that and you only want to look at coming soon and active you can go to uh set currently selected search criteria as my starting def default mm -hmm. right so whichever ones you want and it's going to be different for everything that you do right so every page so here's an example of of this right so if i go to commercial to detailed this only has active right so if i want coming soon on here i can do i can do the same thing set current default criteria set. So if I go to search to, let's see, lots and acreage, well, multifamily, let's, let's try that. If I go to multifamily detailed, I only have active on here, but I want coming soon. Also, search, or I'm sorry, the, the little gear thing, set currently and default criteria set. So next time when I go in, and this is how often I probably don't use the quick, I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, that just has active. If I go to search to residential to quick, um, just active. Yeah, I may have changed that. But but just doing that, just doing that, presetting those is going to help because active and coming soon, you can make offers on contingent option contract, active kick out. You can, but it's it's unlikely. Why even show them unless you you really want something? When you go to detailed. You can go down to the bottom down here and additional fields, add or remove. So when you want a client that wants to own or finance, which is called when they when they say, hey, can, can, can I do owner finance? What they're really asking is if you can do owner carry first. Okay. Owner carry first is owner finance. All right. And then when you do that. You have 108 in all of Netris that are owner finance. That's it. 
narrows down your search and um, makes it a lot easier. Criteria, add or remove, you can do, you can, you can search by listing agent, you can search by MLS ID, by office MLS ID. If you have a brokerage you're just curious about, find out that brokerage's MLS ID and you can see everything that they have on the market. Flooring, if you want somebody that only has, that only wants um, marble, for example. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of this one. Well, oh, maybe it won't let me. Let's try again. You can create those very unique concrete floors, for example. Then you can look at everything on the market that has concrete floors in the description, okay? You can add the things in there that are, are odd to search for, interior features, if you, know, if you want something that has a certain type of house, if you want, if somebody wants a dome house, they can do that. You know, I had somebody, if they were looking for a house with a guest house in the back. How is, how is that? So you would want to do, let's see. So that would probably be uh, like a mother-in-law or a second. So we just need to find. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me see if, okay, Zoom, you guys, you guys got anything else? I'm going to sign off. And we're running out of time, cut you loose a little bit early. If you guys have any questions. I'm okay. Just listening. Just listening? You want me to leave it on? No, you're okay. fine. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll share, uh, share the, this one, just so you can see what we're doing. So if we're looking for something with a, a guest house or a mother-in-law suite, right? Is that what, kind of what we're looking at let's see if we have guest quarters there we go so so hold on I've, so i've got something else we're going to start from from fresh and again i always search in detail because if you have something in there that is creative um you can find it a little easier that way so if we go guest quarters i don't see private outdoor space that's not it separate entry quarters, maybe another one that you may want to check out. But um, 449 matches, what's a, what's a price point? Um, Ballpark. Like 300. Okay, so we go 300 to 400. Now there's only 35. So if we look at those, this is everywhere at least on MLS that has guest quarters between that price range. What area are they looking to buy? Um, not really. You got one in Duncanville, a couple in Dallas, one in North Fort Worth. So, so not a lot, but this one, yep. You've got lots of, lots of tools and criteria you can look at. And maybe this is the guest quarters down here, I would bet. Yeah, so so they actually labeled occupied guest quarters has kitchen with tile. So this may be something where guest quarters is rented out. And that's something that may offset some of that, some of that mortgage, right? Yeah. It would depend on so some in, in that instance, let's look at the notes. Please do not show guest unit until there's a contract in place. Um, main house and apartments can be shown, tenant and guest area, which can be sh shown once contract is in place. Please do not bother him. Okay, so there's, there's a tenant in place and then you'd have to talk to them about yeah, the lease and duration and, or if you wanna just keep it and you know, a house that's, that's 380, um, you know, the mortgage on that minus the, the rent that they're charging them, you're, you're house hacking, right? You're in there for far cheaper than maybe what they want. Maybe they want privacy. Maybe they want somewhere for guests, who knows? But, but that's, the, 
That's an option, maybe. Um, got one in White Settlement. You got one in North Fort Worth. Just depends. Look at that. There's a garage with, with the guest, right? So that would be, um, yeah, not real sure. There you go. There it is. There's your guest quarters. And then you're going to have um, there's guest quarters of the garage with the kitchen and bathroom. Info not included on listing details, and it's a fixer upper. So there you go. I mean, there's yeah, you know, there's a there's a number of ways that that you can you can use some of the tools on here to really narrow down what you're looking for. Yeah. So there's there's some options. <clears throat> Anything else, questions, concerns, anything you guys want to go over, talk about how to do? Well, actually, it's just a situation. Uh, do you have any lenders uh, that you know of that do mm -hmm. land in uh, Azel or Springtown? Yeah. I'll mm -hmm. contact you and see if you can yep. send me any. I got, I got lots of, lots of that. Okay. So I haven't been able to, I don't know why it's difficult. I haven't been able to connect that with the IABS link to my email. Okay. How how do you where, have? Where can I find how to do that? Is there a video? No. Well, yes, but uh, where where's your IABS link? Email. No, I, I don't know. I'm asking you. Oh. <laughs> okay. So you you do have you do have some options. Um, she emailed it to you. Oh, yeah. She emailed it to us yesterday. Again. Correct. The link or an IBS? That's an IBS. She says, was it the link? It was just the IABS. And she said, copy it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So let me look at the email that she has. Okay. I'll give you that. Well, I can, I can show you a shortcut how to do that. That's easy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, that's all we got for, for the Zoom. You guys have any questions? Reach me on however you can. And well, they, well, well most everybody knows there um, how, to, how to get a hold of me, but it's not, not super hard. But thanks for coming. And um, I think uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon.